Previously, I'm the top 10 vegan moments of the month. I, I'm so grateful for my freedom. I don't want to make choices that took that away from any other being that would suffer if that choice was taken away from them. I've only been vegan for three years and part of me wishes that I did feel weaker because of these choices because that would really test my nobility and how, how strongly I believe in these ethics. And so I went to Betty's farm down the road and bought a couple eggs. I see the chickens running around completely, you know, free chickens, not just some supermarket thing, like really free. And I had a couple raw eggs and I felt better, I did feel better. And then, and you know, I don't know why. Ways to wipe the wine as the moon and it look like a joke. Why did the poor suffer the war and drugs? Why was Jesus Christ giving out free hugs? Why was the poor car made of heaven? Why do we have an epidemic of contempt? Why did the banks on both sides thanks? Why is the human race divided up into ranks? Why did the chicken cross the road only to escape from the only rape? We have a fancy pain of honey in as an anime. Take a look at your plate, mate. Why did the chicken cross the road only to escape from the only rape? We have a fancy pain of honey in as an anime. Let's take a look at your plate, mate. I am so conflicted. Animal agriculture is horrible for animals and the planet. Don't want animals to be harmed. Don't want environment to die. But meat. Huh? Ah. This. Makes sense. Yes, 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 yes. Let's kill all the babies and put them in a pie. Everyone can eat them, no one will ask why. It's all alright All alright Hey everyone, today we are at Happy Kuh It's a farm sanctuary outside of Erfurt in Germany And I'm hanging out with probably the most affectionate cow ever If you've never been to a sanctuary and you're an activist, please go because it will reconnect you with the animals that we're fighting so hard for and it'll also like 
rejuvenate your soul. And if you're not vegan, or or you're vegan and you know you're not active, you should also go to a sanctuary because I think anyone that were to come to this place and lay on this cow and interact with this cow the way that I've been lucky enough to do today, you wouldn't be able to inflict harm on them. There's no way. And you get to kind of, you know, reconnect to, uh, to what's important. Lena Seb and I actually visited a, a dairy farm, an organic, you know, uh, humane dairy farm in Germany while we were on our tour. And we went inside and told them we were tourists just trying to look at cows. The baby cows after one day are taken from their mums and then they're put into these little pens directly across from where their moms are in, cage, in cages. Not only have their babies just been taken from them, but they can see them and hear them crying. If we can put ourselves into the same place of the mother, imagine a human mother every nine months giving birth to a child and that child then being taken away. Imagine the toll that would have on their heart. If we can just simply be empathetic towards their feelings and their desires. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's take all our mothers and granulate their minds We can make a gravy to pour upon our pies So all right, all right Let's take all the animals, we'll send them all to school we can try to teach them they're not as good as you. 748. Demand for vegan products in our supermarkets has soared. Yet more and more of us are cutting back on the amount of meat we eat. Um, ben is taking a look at this issue. Morning. Morning. Yeah, a lot of retailers cashing in on this, so launching their own ranges, and they've seen massive demand. Thanks very much. Yes, uh, the Vegan Society, which gives meals and its ingredients this stamp of approval, says there's been a 60% rise in the number of products that are now being registered with its trademark. Now, nearly all the big supermarkets have launched vegan ranges as demand has grown, and that's because more than a quarter of us quarter of us even, now say we've considered limiting how much meat that we actually consume. Well, Dominique and Pia Zeska is from the Vegan Society and joins me this morning. Dominique, nice to see you. Um, why is there such a growing demand for it? I mean, we touched on some of that idea that people are moving away from meat, but that can't be the only reason, mm. can it? We saw a lot of people come to veganism because of ethical reasons, um, but we've also got a number of people coming to it because of environmental concerns or health concerns. Um, and veganism is a great lifestyle choice for all of us who care about these issues. Yeah, and what's interesting is that, so, I mean, we've got some of the stuff here. Some of it looks absolutely like meat. So there's mm. sausages, there's mince, there's burgers. That's sort of recreating meat, but it's vegan. Um, and some stuff is absolutely not looking like meat. But other big supermarkets sort of cashing in on this trend and just sticking the label vegan on most things. And yeah, clearly it has to be vegan, but it's a way of selling more stuff. Yes, it is. So we, we're not fooling ourselves and thinking that businesses have suddenly turned compassionate. They are there because there's a profit to be made. What do you have to do to get your stamp of approval? What defines it as being vegan? Uh, so the Vegan Society started the vegan trademark back in 1990 because there is no legal protection for the word uh, vegan on labelling. Uh, and all the company has to do is contact us and then our team will uh, check all the ingredients in a product and verify that it's vegan. And if they find something that's not vegan, we are happy to assist them in uh, finding an alternative so that they can veganise the product, if you like. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, Dominique, really nice to see you. Thanks for explaining all of that. Um, yeah, massive soaring demand for um, all of that sort of food. Uh, the big retailers really, as you heard, they're cashing in on it. Uh, it's a big business, but yeah, it comes with certain warnings. Uh, more from me after eight. We're going to talk about that BA problem. BA equal inhabitants of the earth. Vegans spend a lot of time talking about veganism. There are vegan protests and marches, leaflets and documentaries, all made with the intention of sharing the message with those who aren't vegan. Vegans share photos and videos on social media and often express anger and frustration. Vegans want others to become vegan and the efforts we make create a lot of misunderstandings. So let me explain. Vegans don't hate you. Most of us are just trying to help. We don't want to take away the things you enjoy or insult you as an individual. We just want to help you make an important connection. 
and full of emotions, we try to explain the importance of veganism to those who dismiss it. We want to show the world that the myths they believe aren't true. We want to empower you with the things we've discovered. We speak on behalf of victims whose voices are never heard. So we're desperate for people to make this connection. It's not that we hate you. We just hate the system that raised us into thinking that we should treat life as a product. And we hate the advertising that lied to us. We hate the traditions that normalized our indifference. And we hate the part of ourselves that never questioned it. We hate the fact that people make money destroying the planet and enslaving those who live on it. And we hate the industries that made us think that we need to eat animals to be healthy and happy. Because now we know it wasn't true. But you can't understand how valuable it is until you've tried. All we know is that we can create a revolution within ourselves and empower our minds beyond the lies of our culture and be the change that we want to see. And we can share that with those around us and inspire a more mindful world that thinks for itself rather than being programmed by businesses that want to profit from our ignorance. You don't need to buy or do anything. Empowered people make mindful decisions. So whoever you are, let's all just empower each other to live a life full of passion and connection. This calf is really sick. She needs she needs to be seen by a veterinarian right now. She needs to be seen by Alicia back up and get this whole thing. She needs to be put to in a grip. She was in a dead. She is dying. She's dying right now. She needs to see a veterinarian. No, she needs to be under arrest. Alicia? Stop. You don't dictate the contract, She's gonna die, please! Please! Alicia, 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 sit down, call me if I can help you. Okay, okay. Put it on. We let people know we're being arrested. I will, but it's just... Okay, she's dying, she's dying right there. We're being arrested, we're being arrested! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the intermission. This is a good time to collect our thoughts and reflect on what we've seen so far. I personally was nearly brought to tears by the- Slightly before my teenage years, I developed a problem with my knee. I was in and out of hospital, 17 operations. I eventually lost my kneecap. I was told I wouldn't walk again properly, let alone be able to do sporting activities, especially things like running. I was going to be registered disabled at one point because it looked so hopeless. That was an incredibly challenging time. so I can relate to it with other beings, whether they be human or not. I know how far I can push myself and I'm prepared to take it for myself but not for anything else. I am trying to do something positive with my running. I'm not just out eyeing up a trophy or thinking I need to get my time down. I'm doing this with a reason and it isn't any of those things. Let's take all their freedom, we'll sell it all online. Make them think that happiness is something they can buy. Well, it's all all right. All So we're here at Hambach Forest, which has become this huge flashpoint in Germany uh, and this battleground between um, activists 
and the police and this energy company, RWE. And we've just come in and I can already see these structures that they've built. There's apparently 150 activists here and they don't want to move. We have this, this dirty secret of, of coal mining in, still happening here in the 21st century. So climate activists are saying, okay, so let's stop them from cutting the forest, then they will stop the coal mining. Okay, it's, makes sense. It's the idea of direct action and of putting yourself in the way of the destruction to, in a symbolic way, but also in a very real way. Around 150 activists are living in tree houses, occupying the 12,000 year old Hambach forest. The occupation started six years ago, but on September 14th, police moved in to clear the forest. Since then, a 4,000 person police operation has been ongoing to evict them. They tell us it's a police area here. The police operation has drawn attention to RWE's plans to clear the forest, making it a national scandal. Over the weekend, thousands of demonstrators joined the Hambach activists in solidarity. And the estimated cost of the police operation so far has already run into the tens of millions of euros. So behind me is, is the forest. Police have basically sealed off this area, but activists are kind of playing cat and mouse with them, um, kind of almost playfully, and, and, but the police are kind of reacting quite um, aggressively. The activists refer to this place as Mordor, the mine, and to be honest, I can totally see why. It makes you think about what it is that we're doing to our planet. It literally looks like a scar. For me, it's important to not just think that RWE is a really bad company and maybe the people in the government right now are the wrong people and we have to change them, but to look for the root of this problem. And for me, that's a capitalist economic system that is based on um, the exploitation of people and of nature. The reign of crime is over. Public safety in Gotham City is no longer a laughing matter. What we're doing is a new form of activism with this stage light, um, and we call it the Vegan Batman light, and we go all around Los Angeles, and you can actually see um, the sign that we put that. Oh my God, look at what we just did. Do you see this? Fact or fiction, one slaughterhouse kills 7,000 animals every night in LA, Staples Center, Vegan Batman light. This is shining for everybody to see. Um, I made some custom gobos for it and we're projecting this on the slaughterhouse, like on the slaughterhouse. I'm not kidding. I think a police helicopter may be flying over, but <laughs> fly over. <laughs> this city is such drama sometimes. Say hi to the police helicopter. Hi. <laughs> Um, oh, the drama. So, not with the bat map. Okay, now the police are here. Hold on. What's up? You've been warned about this, like I said, already. He's going to tell you whether he wants you here or not. My name is George Schaefer, and I've asked you once before at the intersection, I'm telling you now, I don't want you to project anything. I totally get it, but okay. like... So, uh, you, now you've heard it. I understand. Right? So, so the next time you're out here, just be understood that, that we will write you a citation. Understood. And okay. I'm going to let you know that your citation will not hold in court. I have okay, legal behind you can fight that in court. Totally get it. You can totally fight that in court. Totally get it. You're going to find that it's a waste of time. Not one thing has ever gone through court because it's free speech, A, so I don't need permission. Yes, you do because he owns that It doesn't right matter there. because it's not vandalism. He can only do with vandalism or trespassing. It's his building. It's vandalism. You decide what gets posted on it it's, at any single it, point in time. It's, it's vandalism or trespassing, so I totally get it, but there's the... You're supportive of our, our rights, too. Which is that vandalism or trespassing is a monetary value. So it doesn't matter. Okay, look, we're, we're done with the conversation. 
You can take it to court. Actually, so my lawyer will write you, ACLU will write you as well because you're infringing on free speech. You were quite feral, really, being on a farm. As soon as you could toddle, you you were outside, sort of running amongst the cows as, as far as it was safe and quite an outdoor life, really. You know, the, there are ways to handle farm animals that um, that you have to follow simply to get the job done. I began to sort of feel conscious of the fact that the animals had feelings and sort of um, led to feelings of unease about actually eating them when we raised them and um, you realise that they do have personalities and they experience the world. Uh, they're not just um, sort of robots that eat and, and sleep. I couldn't sort of disconnect that feeling of having to get the job done from the fact that they were individuals rather than just sort of units of production. <laughs> just more than a number, really. I came here with the intention of changing the farm to something that would not involve uh, taking animals to the abattoir. You felt as if you were betraying them because you'd made friends with them, if you like. It was soul-destroying, that's how it felt. You know what you're doing and it's horrible. We um, had the farm assessed and uh, we knew that we can do something different with the farm and it would be viable. As winter came to an end, we started to think, well, you've got all these cows on the farm, what, what'll happen to them? Will you send them to market or, or maybe send them to slaughter? And I said, well, that wouldn't be a good way to start vegan farming. We'll try and find them places at sanctuaries all together at one go. Calves and cows can stay together and all the family groups can be preserved. After our cattle had gone, we received the first postcards and letters from people saying how wonderful what we are doing. And um, a lot of people said, you have restored my faith in humanity. It was a joy really to learn that, that um, the ones who were still living on the farm were going to be saved, literally and um, enjoy just being cows. Sauce. 
animal in mind All mammals want the same Duality is law Nature knows no pain but this right here That's crazy Oreo's a vegan, I did not know that I watched that documentary and I said to myself This is the way to go So, what you got to do? Well, it seems we have a bone to pick with you Oh yes we do Oh yes we do Below and above, eat the energy of love. Below and above, it's the energy of love. 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 Don't just see. upon the innocent anime take a look at your plate mate anyway I'm just um, I'm working on the top 10 now I am Batman.